Hi, in this video I'll be talking about the Pebble implementation of the BART, the Balloon Analog Risk Task. Um, this is a picture of the BART and the basic idea is it measures how risk-seeking or risk-averse you are and <coughs> um, the setup is there's a balloon and you can push a button and every time you push a button some air goes into it and you collect uh, the potential for money for every pump you put into it but if it pops you don't get any money and you get to decide when you want to stop blowing up the balloon and you collect that much money and so um, this was uh, this has been around for close to 20 years here's one the first or one of the first papers on the BART by Lejeuze um, 2002 so about 15 years ago and here's their original setup and you can see it looks very similar t to the Pebble version and the idea is there's different balloons and one has a max life of 8 pumps, one has a max life of 32 pumps, one has a max life of 128 pumps and the way it works is if you are, um, are you on average uh, collecting the money uh, after uh, half of the number of pumps uh, you will maximize your reward and if you're risk averse you'll be less and if you're risk seeking you'll be less so um, if you tend to go too long more of these will pump more of these balloons will break before you collect the money if you tend to go too short you will be leaving money on the table and so there's a optimal level in each of these and it's half of the max um, but you're not told this so um, there is a computerized version out there um, by the original authors that's been in use and it's used by a lot of people and it's fine um, I decided for a few reasons to implement a, a version for Pebble uh, one of them is that um, because some people want to run a set of t tests together and the rest of them are in Pebble so let's put this one in there as well so this allows you to run it along with other tests and get more cross validity all within one system. Uh, another reason might be that t to have greater customizability <coughs> um, or uh, more flexibility in your data collection, recording information, and things like that. And so, so um, some of the th issues with customizability include translations. And so Pebble offers a lot of ways to translate all of the text, including the money and the, the text here um, and the other thing is I'll sh and I'll show you this there's a number of parameters you can do to explore different settings of the BART to make it more risk um, or to make some of the balloons greater or less um, uh, cost <coughs> effective and things like that so this is the Pebble BART if you install the Pebble system and you open up the launcher it'll appear under battery and battery under BART B-A-R-T should be near the top all capitals and um, you click here and it should show you a picture of it and first we'll look at some of the parameters you can set to customize this um, by default it should be pretty close to the settings that um, the original used but there's a number of settings and um, many of these are new to the latest release um, and have not been available in sort of older previous versions um, and a lot of them were suggested by users who wanted more flexibility in how they did the test um, so here's a couple things allow auto pump so you can have it set up so you click uh, the button and every click of the button it pumps it up um, one pump and this can get tedious and so you can also um, set this option and I guess it's defaulted to no but right now I have mine set to yes where you um, uh, where you just hold the mouse down and it blows it up while you're doing it so it's more like a, a pump button um, and 
Next is start balloon size, default of 10. This is just the radius of the, of the circle depicting that balloon that we're going to start with. Um, the next is the money per pump. And a lot of people who do this like to actually give real money for what people earned. And, you know, you, so you may have to adjust this depending on your locality or how much your budget is to make it one cent or if you're um, half a cent or something like that. Or if you're in another currency, maybe you need to make it 50 if it's another type of coinage. Um, so you can adjust this money per pump to make it uh, more relevant to your uh, participants. Um, so there's three different balloons and we just call these one, two, and three. And um, for the balloons, this is the max um, number of pumps. So th the, there are no balloons within life one with, which can go more than eight pumps before breaking. There are none within set two that can go more than 16, and there are none in set three that can go more than 128. And there's a, when you're doing the task, there's a big difference between eight and 16 and then 128. And it might be reasonable to adjust these a little bit, maybe have 832 and 64, or 832 and 128, or 816 and 32, to see if people are sensitive to smaller differences as well. Um, but at the same time, this is sort of a new feature. Uh, you, each one of these is a different color, and I think they go uh, yeah, orange, gold, or yellow, and blue. Um, so the blue is the one that's the most, um, the strongest balloon. Um, you can pick one or another one of these, or two or th of the three, or all three of these um, balloons. So maybe you only want to test one size. Uh, maybe you only um, care about being sensitive to one of them. Um, and so you can turn on and off any of these. Um, but uh, they're all controlled by trials per set. So when you have 10, that means there's going to be 10 of this, 10 of this, and 10 of this. That's actually in the first phase. So the first phase of the test was designed as mixed block. So you take 10 of life one, 10 of life two, and 10 of life three, so 30 trials, and you mix them randomly. And so sometimes you'll get a blue, and sometimes you'll get an orange, and sometimes you'll get a yellow. Um, then phase two happens within the task, and now it's blocked. And so phase two works by doing 20 or trials per set times two of these, then 20 of these, and 20 of these in a row. And this is to see if you can like exploit what you've learned more specifically at the end of the session. Um, but it creates sort of two phases, and perhaps you want to only use the mixed, or only use the uh, blocked. Um, and so you can control that here. You can't do blocked before mixed with these parameters, you'd have to go in and reprogram that yourself. But you can have on a pretty flexible control. Now there's a number of ways by setting these parameters you could screw up. You could put both of these zero, or all three of these zero, or something like this, and end up with no trials at all. And um, if you do that, then it's going to figure that out right before it runs and it'll it'll exit and give you a little error message saying there's a program error, programming error. It's, um, you're going to have to fix it, so you should, you know, if you toy with this, definitely test before you put it in front of uh, lab participants, but um, it should at least give you a warning if you're trying to run an experiment that's not going to work. Finally, and this is really a novel um, idea, <coughs> If we go back to this original paper, you'll see that, especially for this balloon, I guess this is the yellow uh, or the orange, there's a pretty uh, big chance that it pops after um, after just the first pump. And this is, um, and in fact, there's a chance for all of them that they pop after the first pump. And so um, I added a feature a parameter that lets you say um, 
how uh, how many pumps do you get before this whole breaking starts? And a reasonable number would be one. So you basically it's going to take this and push it to the right by one, and um, so that you get your first one for free. It never pops, but then this um, distribution comes in where popping starts um, uh, equally often on each one. So um, this would you know, if you use this, this means that the norms and maybe even some of the validities no, uh, of the many hundreds of papers that have used this in the past um, have used, you know, the BART in general in the past are probably no longer applicable. But it would be interesting to, to either test this or put this in because it can actually be pretty frustrating um, if you're, when you pump um, and it bursts right away because you don't really get a choice in in that case. Um, okay, so see, these are some of the settings and we'll turn on every one, but we'll just do I don't know, three per set so we can get through this pretty quickly. So three per set, that would be uh, nine in the first phase and 18 in the second phase, so it should go pretty quickly. And so if we were to run this see what happens if we hit full screen. All right, so here is the task, and it gives a pretty detailed set of instructions. You may also want to uh, speak this aloud. Um, here you can see, even though we we're only having uh, maybe 30 trials, um, the instructions don't um, reflect that automatically, and you would have to edit this to reflect the correct number of trials you happen to be using. So if I hit the space bar here, we get, this is a circle of radius 10. That's what the start size was. And I have the auto pump on, so when I'm holding it down, um, it it will sort of automatically pump. It's kind of fussy to get right, and so I probably wouldn't recommend doing that unless you're using maybe all blue where there's a really long timeline. So you can see that, um, let's see, sometimes it pops after the first pump, and we could maybe put a a delay um, using the uh, the parameter to make sure it doesn't it never pops the very first time. So it gives um, total earned so far. It gives how much you earned in the last one. It'll keep you track help you keep track of it. Now we're in the second phase. You can see we get a bunch of blue ones at once, and each color will be twice as many in this phase. I guess I did all three phases and I didn't even realize it because it went through so quickly. So I earned $4.10 in this task. Um, and for only that many trials, if I were better, um, I probably would have earned <coughs> maybe twice that much. And if I had three times as many trials, I could have earned $30 um, in this if I wanted to actually pay someone um, that much money. Maybe uh, you want to do that, or maybe you want to say, I'm going to pay you 10 cents for every dollar you earn, or something like that. Okay, so that's the task. Now, um, this has been used um, by a number of researchers. A lot of them have used it because they are using it within a larger test battery, or they're translating it to another um, language, and I don't know if the original part is easy to translate. So um, so here's a paper, for example, Padron Rodrigo and De Vega. Um, if you look, if you search for Pebble Bart on Google Scholar, it has a lot of hits. Not all of these are actual Pebble Bart hits, but there's probably fi at least 15 papers um, that have used it in one way or another. Um, effects of noise on risky decision making, decision competence. 
searching for predictors of the risk decision making process in social situations in adolescence. This was, looks like a Spanish paper. Um, this was, I think, German or Swiss. So a lot of people who are using this are doing it so because they can translate it or there's aspects of this version that are just more consistent or easier to use than the original software. So um, one, one of the reasons why you might want to use it is because you want to translate it in your own language. And we can see that um, if we open the folder, there are German, French, and HR, I guess this is like Hungarian um, translation that exists already. And there's not too many things, but you know, it's nice to have the money in a currency that you are familiar with or your participants will be familiar with. And so that's useful to have. And if you select BART, translate the test. Um, unfortunately, when I built this dialog, I didn't anticipate that the instructions would be bigger than this could support, so this is not ideal. Um, and you may have to edit this instruction with a text editor or something, but you could, uh, if you want to especially change the, the way the money, the money symbol, you can change from the dollar sign to a euro or whatever is um, the sign that you care about. Each one of the labels are has its own ability to be translated. And some of these, let's see, like this, um, I have on two different lines. And I did this by adding a bunch of spaces so it, it would work out within, <coughs> um, or I, I think this is done by adding you know, returns so that it would show up reasonably well within that box that it's printed in. Okay, so there are several different translations already and you can translate on your, to your own. So now if we want to see what the data are going to look like, I just ran, I guess, probably subject 24, I think the second session on subject 24. And uh, I think I'd reuse this. So this is um, ignore everything above here, but we're we haven't even missing the uh, the first. This sort of was an old version that got exited out halfway through. So it oh it wrote it appended to the end, and we sort of corrupted one of the lines because of that. So. Um, this is the data I just collected. And if we look at the different columns, here's the subject code, the trial. We're missing trial one now, but it was in there. We just would have had to edit it a little better. The type, this is the balloon um, that you're shown at that time. And you can see these are the mixed uh, trials, three of each. And then we have all ones and all twos and all threes. This is the life, meaning um, before the balloon is displayed before the trial, we sample how long that balloon, how many pops that balloon will take before it actually bursts. And so this indicates it would have taken three, and I hit it three times, and so it burst. I collected zero dollars, and this is the time of that. Um, these are times of that trial, I guess. Here was one that was sampled with a life of five. I pumped five times and it burst. Here's one that was sampled with a life of 77. I did 10 times, so I collected um, 50 cents. My total so far is 50 cents. It did not burst, um, and so on. So um, you can use both the overall amount of money um, earned in each one of these life categories to assess whether they're calibrated with the risk, but you can also see their average number of pumps for each one of the groups. And for um, the optimal is half of the maximum. In this case it was 8, 16, and 128, so it would have been 4, 8, 
and 64 would be the optimal and if people are going more than that you know the the higher they go the more risk seeking they are and i think you might expect people are generally a little risk averse so they um, they pump less than the optimal um, let's see if that shows up here so <coughs> um, average adjusted pumps so for the blue people tended to go about 28 for the yellow it went about 11 or 12 and for orange they went about four so they were pretty calibrated for four right at the beginning at least um, they were higher than you'd expect for yellow because yellow the optimal would be at eight um, oh no no it would be 16 so 16 is the optimal and they are under optimal there and 64 is optimal here so um, I guess in this case probably the risk seeking people are earning more and they are performing more optimally they're earning more money um, and risk averse people are earning less so uh, the way this is set up it's kind of um, encouraging people to be risk seeking and so maybe by changing some of these things uh, the way it works maybe the changing the way it's sampling you can actually you could actually set it up to be less risk, risk uh, reward r r less risk seeking less to maybe tease apart people who are just behaving optimally with ones who are actually risk seeking but nevertheless, uh, this is widely used as an index of risk, risky behavior, and it's been validated in all types of ways. All right, so that is sort of the data that you end up getting out of this. Um, no other reports or anything are, are saved, but um, the data are pretty simple. All right, well, that is the pebble BART task and it's especially useful if you need to translate into your own language or want to play with some of these parameters to see the extent to which they still apply if you change things. And so you can download this at pebble.sourceforge.net. Thank you.